Welcome to lecture 16, if-else statements. If-else statements are the second part to if statements. Basically with an if statement, let's go ahead and create one really quick. We'll say int age equals five if age is less than 18. So with a traditional if statement, if this is true, which it is, it runs the true section of the if statement. So it would run this code. So this is the true section. So it runs the true section. However, with if else statements, we can now handle the false section, meaning if this if statement is false. And the way we do that is we add the else keyword followed by the else block. So now we have the if block. So this is the true section of the if statement. And if that is false, false then it will do the false section so I'll say console right in the line this is the false section so if we ran this code right now 5 5 is less than 18 so it would say this is the true section so let's go ahead and test that this is the true section however if we make this 50 now which makes that if statement false it should now run the false section and as you can see, it says this is the false section. So basically, what I want you to get out of this so far is else is the false section to an if statement. That's it. Else is the false section. If the if statement is false, it will go to the else. So with this, we can actually expand our last program with the age a little bit more. So let's go ahead and try that again. So basically, this was an age validator. So I'm going to say console.writeLine, line, enter your age again. Int age equals int dot parse. Console dot read line. So now I have the age. I'm going to say if the age is uh, greater than or equal to 18, I'm going to say console dot write line. You're good to go. So this is what we had in the last lecture. So if age is greater than 18, it says you're good to go. However, now with the else, we can extend on this and say, well, if they aren't 18, we can then display another message. So I'm going to say else, console that right line, sorry, you aren't, you aren't 18 yet. So now we have both sides, the true and the false section. So if I run this, enter your age, I'm 20, you're good to go. However, if I'm 15 only, sorry, you aren't 18 yet. So now this is actually a little bit more practical application. It has both sides. If it's greater than or equal to 18, and if, it's, and if you're less than 18, so it can handle everything. Okay, so everything so far is going good. This should make sense. However, what happens when you want to do something based off of more than just a true or false? Because right now, this can only handle two cases, if you're greater than or equal to 18, or if you're less than 18. But however, what if I wanted to handle a situation where I want to check at every single age? I want to check if they're one, do something if they're one, that's completely different. If they're two, do something that too that's completely different three four five up to maybe 10 years old we want to do different things for each age number now obviously we need if statements but this gets a little bit more tricky now off the top of your head you may be wondering okay let's just do why can't we just do lots of if statements like this so if we said if age equals one do something if age equals two do something else we'll just do up to three right now if age equals three let's do something else so I'm gonna add my console right lines I'm gonna say that you are three we'll just add some dummy data right now it doesn't really matter so you are oh this is your one two and three so you are one two and three if I run this code and I type in a one two or three I should get the output so if I type in two you are two so now with this, I can handle all different types of cases that I want to list. I want to list if they're 1, 2, 3. If there's 72, I want to do something 
extremely specific to them being 72. And now I can. Our program can think on its own and make this action. However, this is not completely efficient. The reason why it's not efficient is that your age, whatever you type in, 1, 2, or 3 right now, can only be 1, 2, or 3. It can't be both 1 and 2 at this same exact time. And what I mean by that is if I type in 2, it, it should never say, it's, not, it's never going to be 1, 2, and 3. So if I type in 2, it should never check 3 because it's impossible to be 3 if you are 2. But that's what this code says. It says even if I type in 2, that would make this true, and it will say you are 2. As soon as it's done printing you are 2, it's going to go ahead right to here and print you are 3, or it's going to check to see if you are 3. But I know you can't be 3 because you are 2. So this does not make logical sense. Just to show you that it actually does do that, if I run it like this in debug mode, basically this allows me to look at the program step by step to see what the computer is actually doing. So I'm going to type in 2. Let me just minimize this. Uh, so as you can see, my the computer is reading this line of code right now. As I step into it, it says, okay, that's true. Let's print UR2. But once I print UR2 and I'm done with that, it continues on. And now it's checking if I'm 3. And then I was gonna, it's going to skip over that. But it still wasted time checking to see if I was 3. Now you're probably like, oh, okay, that's not that bad. But if I had, let's say, 100 if statements here, and it was right on the first one, it would have to go through the rest of the 99 if statements checking every single one, even though you know, logically, it can't be it. But a computer is dumb. It doesn't know logically, or practically, I mean, it doesn't know that it practically can't be one, two, and three. It only could be one of them. So we have to tell it that if you pick one, two, or three, if I type in two, to run the code that's inside the to if statement and don't check the third one because I know it can't be it and you're just going to waste your time if you actually do check it. And the way we do that is by adding else's. These else's link them together like, like we did before when we had one if and one else. Um, if the if was false, it went to the else section because they were that else basically linked them together. So by doing else's here, if I connect them with else's, I'll explain in a second. If I add these else's, it basically creates a link now. So now these are all connected together, and this is how it's read. It says, if age is 1, run this code, right? However, if age is not 1, it goes to the false section. Okay, so I go to the false section, which is the next else. Oh, the false section for this is another if statement. So it says, okay... If the age is 2, do this. If that's true, we'll do the else. It will go to the else section of that if statement, which is now this one. Oh, it looks like it's another if statement. So I can say if age equals 3, if that's true, then do this. So they're all linked together. But now, as you remember, in when we had just one if and one else, if the true section ran, it never ran this the false section and basically that behavior allows this code to only run once if I type in ages 2 and I type in a 2 it will run this code but because that tr is true and they're all linked together it will not even try running this because they're linked together it knows that it can't be that because it, this true section already ran so let's just go ahead and test it first and then I'll debug it so I'll type in 2 enter you are 2 perfect now let's debug it. Let's put this breakpoint there. I'll explain debugging more in the future because it helps to understand your code. But I'll type in 2. Now it hits my code. It says, okay, the computer is waiting there. I'm going to step into it. So it knows, okay, age is 2, so it's going to run UR2. However, notice as soon as I'm done with that, watch, I step out, it skips right over the else if. It did not even evaluate this code. So this code was never even looked at which is what you want because like I said if you have a hundred if statements you don't want it to run every single if statement even though the first one was the correct one with this that would not happen it would run the first one and skip to the end of all the if statements and pick up where it left off which is the exact behavior that you want 
So that's it for this lecture. In the next lecture, compound expressions and if statements, we're going to look at how we can make our if statements bigger and have more conditions built into it. This is basically what we did in the first lecture with nested if statements. However, this is another way of doing nested if statements. We can make more complex if statement checks.